things, but seek God whilst you can still find him. You see, we're now in a generation where people as young as 13, 14 are out and doing prostitution. You know, me, myself, I come from a, a wicked background. I used to do drug dealing. I used to do so much wickedness in my life. But the Lord and Savior saved me. You see, he can save anybody in your situation. This is why we're in a generation. So many people are struggling with depression. So many people are struggling with anxiety because they have no purpose in their life. They have no meaning in their life. They're just living to impress people. I'm here to tell you, if you knew how long eternity was, you'd stop impressing man and you'd start impressing God. Hallelujah. If you knew how long the judgment of God could take, you'd stop impressing people. You see, in this generation, we live for other people's opinions. But I'm here to tell you, repent of your sins and believe in the gospel this is good news you have purpose in this message when you look around in this fallen generation what do you see you see people constantly vaping because they can't even breathe with their own oxygen anymore you see people constantly smoking we're born sober but we choose to get high it don't make sense hallelujah but i'm not speaking as an hypocrite i'm speaking as one who done what everyone else has done you know i come from a place where i used to smoke i used to drink i used to do gang wars i used to do so much wicked things but the lord and savior jesus christ he found me in that prison cell and he showed me to come and to seek him whilst he can still be found you see my friends i'm not here to tell you a fairy tale i'm not here to tell you myths and legends there are many different religions they'll all tell you be a good person be a good person but what is your standard of good based on you see, if you compare your standard of good and you compare God's standard of good before his standard, you're a failure. But that's why it says, by grace through faith are we saved, not of work so that nobody can boast. I'm here to tell you about the grace of God today. You see, I'm here to tell you about the mercy of God today because no one wants to speak about that no more. You see, when you die, there's two destinations. According to the Bible, according to the word, and according to many other faiths. You see, there's over 4,000 religions, but there's only one empty tomb. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yes he did, he rose on the third day. You see, I'm not here for people's opinions. I'm here to genuinely tell you that I love you and I consider you dearly. And I want you guys to know about this God. It's not about religion. I'm not here preaching religion. I'm here preaching a relationship. Have a relationship with God. If you knew this limitless being, if you knew how merciful he was, how, how much he loved you, you would turn from your sins. You see, sin is the breaking of God's law. I'm not here to condemn, I'm here to uplift. I'm not here to condemn you, I'm here to tell you that in God's grace and mercy, regardless of your situation, regardless of how much money you have, that will not save you from death. The Bible says, riches profit not in the day of wrath. Hallelujah. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. Riches profit not in the day of death. You see, a, a person dying on a deathbed, they wouldn't say, I wanted to make more money. A person dying on a deathbed wouldn't say, I wanted to get more women. A person dying on a deathbed would be scared, not knowing where they're going to go. But I'm here to tell you there's peace in knowing the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says he gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding. You see, many people don't know God because they're not looking for him. You see, I wasn't looking for God, but he came and looked for me. And that's the beauty of the message of Christianity. That even though you are sinful, even though you've gone against God, God still comes out his way and pays the burden for you. A lot of people don't understand the message of the gospel. The message is simple. That God is so graceful and so merciful that he considers you, regardless of your situation. But it requires repentance. Repentance means a change of mind, a change of lifestyle. You see, you can ask the people who are around me. My lifestyle made a complete 180 spin because of the grace of God. That's why I'm here to tell you, my friends, seek the Lord whilst you can still find him. The Bible says, if you ask, you shall receive. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, the door shall be open unto you. But whenever someone tells you about Jesus, you say, I don't believe in him. But you've never asked. You've never seek. That's why you've never got the answer that you're looking for. You see, I love to say this, you can make a million pounds today and die tomorrow, it don't mean nothing. You see, I was somebody who was chasing after money, I was somebody who, women were coming, and all of these things. But at the age of 18, just before going into prison, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ showed me that there's a different way of living. That he is merciful. The Bible says his mercy endures forever. So regardless of your situation, your mom may give up on you. Your dad may give up on you. Your cousin may give up on you. Your uncle may give up on you. But the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will never give up on you. Hallelujah. God's not asking for your religion. He's asking for your relationship. He wants to know what's going on with you. He wants to understand your situation. And it, the Bible explains him as a loving person. 
You see, we confuse love with lust. We say we love someone, but we actually just have a strong desire. But let me tell you something. The love of God is kind, it's patient, it's pure, it's not boastful. You see, that's why demons manifest when we preach the gospel. People get very angry when we preach such a loving message. I don't understand why people get so mad. I don't understand why they get so mad. Pardon? God is bad? The Bible does explain the devil as the God of this world in a sense of if you put anything above the one true God, it means that you're worshipping a false God. Hallelujah. For example, your phone could become your God because you're constantly on it. For example, addictions could become your God because you're constantly on it. But I'm here to lead you to the one true God. I'm here to lead you to the narrow path to tell you that you have a purpose before the eyes of God. I know in Bexley Heath, they don't usually come and preach the gospel. So I had to come here and let you guys know that regardless of your situation, regardless of who you are, this message is for all types of people. This message is for all types of age group. Because death does not consider your age. Hallelujah. The gift of God is everlasting life through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why when you turn on your TV, they're constantly mocking the Lord and Savior. They'll have upside down crosses. People's favorite rappers have upside down crosses. Satanists are mocking the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why is that? Why is that? They don't mock any other religion. Why don't they? Why do they mock Jesus? Why don't they mock anyone else? When you go to a pride event, there's always got one guy dressed up as Jesus, mocking him walking on the cross. Why? The Bible explains that as an antichrist spirit. If you don't stand for righteousness, you will fall for wickedness every time. If you don't stand on a firm foundation, that's why the Bible says Christ is the rock. He is our firm foundation. I know that if I leave this world today, the kingdom of heaven is where I'll go. And that's why I'm here to tell you guys. I'm here to let you guys know in these times that the Bible calls the end times, where there's wars and where there's rumors of wars, where there's more earthquakes, where there's more things going on, I want you guys to consider where will you go? Consider what is the meaning of your life? Are you living to impress someone else? Are you living to impress someone else? Are you living just for money? Because remember, money is a temporary thing. If the economy collapses today, then your money don't mean nothing. If the economy collapses today, your money don't mean nothing. That's why I'm here to tell you, what means something is your relationship with God. How do you look before the eyes of God? And there's many different gods, I understand that. I understand and they'll all tell you to be good, be good. But the Bible says nobody is good but God, meaning that in his goodness and in his mercy, he's considered your situation and he's allowed you to come back home. No one wants to kill for everlasting life. The biggest people that you look up to, they're still out here trying to look for a way to live forever, a way to live longer. Shut up. Thank you. I see you. Hallelujah. God bless you. No, don't worry. I won't, I won't shame her, but I'm letting her know. I saw her. Hallelujah. They tell me to shut up when I preach Jesus Christ, but if I was out here in knickers in front of your children, you would clap for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's the one who if I was out here in knickers, no shirt, you would clap for me. You would tell me he's expressing himself. But when I tell you about salvation, you tell me to shut up. Hallelujah. Understand where the minds is of this day and time. The Bible says in the end times, their minds will be as if it's seared with a hot iron. That means that there is many confusion. Hallelujah. It says they'll fall to doctrines of devils. There are many doctrines of devils in this day and age. There are many things leading us far from God. For example, crystals, law of manifestation. We don't know what powers that we're working with. Hallelujah. You think the universe is just going to listen to you because you say, universe, I manifest it. <laughs> the devil, when he, when the, the devil, if he comes and he blesses you, it comes with a price. You have to pay a price. If you don't pay the price, your family member will pay the price. But the Bible says when God blesses you, it comes with no burden. It comes with no burden. It comes with straight blessing. That's why I'm here, I'm here to tell you, my friends. Consider your soul. Consider your spirit. Where are you going to go? You think it's just about eating, drinking, sleeping? God bless you, good sir. You think about it's just eating, sleeping, drinking. We're not here just to work and die. We're not here just to smoke and die. We're not here just to get drunk and die. I'm here to tell you, you're not here just to die. <laughs> you're not here just to live and just die and then lights out eternity, you're gone. No, I'm here to tell you there's hope in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But I'm not here to judge you. Because the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did not come to condemn, but he come to save. He come to save. So I'm here speaking to somebody. If nobody wants to hear the message, the Bible says to dust off my feet. 
But I see there's some people here in the message, so I'll continue to preach. The Bible says that there will be a time where earthquakes will increase, where wars will increase, where rumors of wars will increase, and we're entering into that season. We're entering into that season in which the Bible calls the end times. Our youth, our generation, they're being corrupted by lies. I'm here telling you, hold on to the word of God before they don't give it to you anymore. Hold on to the Lord and Savior before you never know salvation. My friends, it's very serious. It's very serious, my friends. Where will your soul go? Where will you go on the day of judgment? You see, the Bible says, when we're in Christ, we see no judgment. We go straight from death into life. That's why many people will push you away from this message because they don't want you to know about the peace of God that comes with knowing Jesus. And I know some people may have trauma. Maybe when you're younger, you went through some hard times. Maybe the church even caused trauma towards you. On behalf of them people, I apologize. Because us as humans, we don't show the best examples. Maybe that's why you turn away from the church. Because us as humans, we don't show the best examples. We didn't show you how to live like Christ. Don't judge a human because they didn't live like Christ. There's only one Christ and every day we aspire to be like him. Hallelujah. That's why so many people, they hold on to their trauma. They hold on to their pain. But I'm here to tell you that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. This message is for atheists. This message is for Christians. This message is for everyone, regardless of your skin color. My God don't speak one language. He speaks all languages. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have an urgency as if somebody is in a burning house, I'm really trying to get in there and take you out of that burning house. Because if we trust in our own understanding, it leads us to condemnation. You see, we're in a generation where people are actors. They act for other people's opinion. They look one way on the outside, but on the inside, they're not really like that. Hallelujah. And I'm here to speak not only to the older generation, I'm here to speak to the youth. Don't allow your friends to lie to you that it's not good to look for God because the Bible says, seek and you shall find it. Hallelujah. It's better than getting drunk on the weekend, getting high every weekend. What are you looking for? You'll have no joy in it because you have to do it again. You're smoking until your lungs are going black and everything's ruining inside of you and then you're going to say you're having a good time. No, my friends. There's no joy at the end of the bottle. There's no joy at the end of the cigarette. Joy comes in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm not here to say, come to my church, come to my church. I'm here to tell you, my guys, my friends, is more than just coming to church. You don't have to find God in church. You can find him on your knees at home in your room. You don't have to find God in church. You can find him while walking and looking for him. The important part is that you look for him. You look for him. It's a great and dangerous thing to fall into the hands of the living God, meaning to wake up not knowing the grace of salvation. Us as human beings, we need to be saved. Look at this generation, we need to be saved. Saved from what? From our own selves. Humans are rebellious and selfish people. And God didn't create us that way. We chose to be that way. But don't worry, my friends. I have a message that turns the inside of your heart into gold, that turns the inside of your heart to be pleasing to God. It's not about your outside. It's not about your materialistic things. It's about the Lord and Savior. It's about God and do you know him? Do you know this God? Do you know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Because I want you to get to know him. In your spare time, get to know him. Learn more about him. Learn about this God who saved my friend from LGBTQ. Learn about this God who saved my friend from witchcraft. Learn about this God who saved me from prison. Learn about this God whilst you still have the opportunity. Hallelujah. We think that we're doing good because we're doing witchcraft. It's good energy. Good energy. We see those good energies on the day of judgment when they're being judged before the eyes of God. There are 4,000 religions but only one empty two. 4,000 religions will tell you be a good person. But be a good person in front of the eyes of people but in your own room, in your own house, you're being wicked. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that God judges the heart. How does your heart look before the eyes of God? Some people say their grandma's an angel. Their grandma's in heaven. But I thought you don't believe in heaven because when I preach heaven, you hate me. They say rest in peace. What peace are you resting in if you don't know the Prince of Peace? What peace are you resting in if you don't know God? That's why I tell you to take into deep consideration. Where are you going to go? You can swear at me, swear at me, swear louder. I want them to hear you swear at me. Hallelujah. You cannot curse me, I'm a child of God. 
no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me shall be condemned. Hallelujah. You see, when we come and preach the gospel, people get angry. Why do they get angry? When the whole point of the message is to love your neighbor as yourself, to know about the love of God, and to be renewed by the grace of God. But when I come and preach Jesus, they get angry. They look at me like I'm, like I'm swearing at them or something. They look at me like I'm ready to beat them up or something. I don't understand. Actually, let me take that back. I do understand. It's because the name of Jesus Christ makes demons tremble. The name of Jesus Christ makes demons tremble. So when people say preachers bring the worst out of people, it's not the person, it's the spirit that's inside of them. You put the faith in the bus driver to take you home. You don't know him, you've never met him. You put your faith in the train driver to take you to your destination. You don't know them, you've never met them. Why don't you put your faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Us as human beings may think we're good because we give money to charity. What, because you give a pound every week? You're a good guy now, you're a good person. The Bible says nobody is good but God. Check your moral standards. What do you compare your, your, your heights of goodness with? What is good in your sight? Because what the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ done is greater than any man could do. Hallelujah. Us as human beings, how long we got on this earth? Maybe, maybe 60, 70 years if we're lucky? 100, 100 maybe? What's 100 years compared to eternity? <laughs> What's a hundred years compared to eternity? That's what I'm trying to let you know about this eternal love of God. I'm trying to let you know about this eternal peace of God. This eternal peace. Us as human beings, we count birthdays. In the kingdom of God, you will never count another birthday again. You'll be circumferenced by the peace of God and the mercies of his goodness. And it don't require your good works. Hallelujah. It don't require your good works. It requires your heart. One time I was preaching. I was in central London. I was preaching. For those who want to listen i was in central london i was preaching and there was a person that walked by three times and on the third time i put down my microphone and he came to me and he said to me i was just about to commit suicide thank you can you pray for me do you know how much trauma so many people are going through do you know how much pain so many people are going through i'm here to tell you by his wounds we are healed be healed of your hardships, be healed of your pain, be healed of your trials. It's all in the name of Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. On how good we are anymore. There's a lot of deception in the world that tells you you need to be perfect. He didn't say that. Jesus was a real person who spoke about heaven and hell. And he spoke about how our life does have meaning and how he loves every single one of us. Because every one of us is made in the image of God. Every single one of us was made for a purpose and he loves every single one of us. How much, how good, new, good news is that? How good of news is that, that we have a creator of the universe who loves us? He genuinely does. So when we quote John 3.16, that God for so loved the world, he really means it. And what is love? Love isn't just a feeling. Many people think that love is just a feeling. It's just a chemical in your brain. But it's so much more than that. Love is the will of the good of other people. So even when you're not feeling like it, if you have kids or you have parents who really love you, even when they're not feeling like it, that's true love when they can get out of bed in the morning and they can do good for you even when they're not feeling like it. And that was like with Jesus on the cross. The day before, he, or a couple of days before, he said to the Father in heaven, take this cup away from me if it's your will. But if not, whatever your will is to be done. That is true love right there. It's like you don't even want to do it. You don't even want to make that sacrifice in your heart. But you do it anyway because he loved us so much that he was willing to bear the punishment that we deserve for us. So how, much, how good is that love? That's really good to me. But we need to ask ourselves, what is sin? Why did Jesus even need to die on the cross for us? That doesn't even make sense because a lot of people say that they're good people. And a lot of people say that I'm a good person, so I deserve to go to heaven. It doesn't really matter what I believe. But... If you go to a judge when you've committed a crime, I, I know none of you, a lot of you respect the law, I hope. Most of you respect the law, that's why you're out here and you're not in prison. The truth of the matter is the judge is going to tell you, you've still broken the law, so you still, have a pe you still have a penalty to pay for that fine. So we can't just let you off the hook because that's not what a just judge does. 
So if we try and plead with God and say, I've done all these good things, we've still broken the law. So we're still worthy of that judgment. We're worthy of that punishment. But the good news is we don't have to take on that punishment because Jesus said, I'll take on that punishment for you. It's like if Jesus comes along and says for that crime that you've done, let's say you're about to face 100 years. Jesus says, I'll, I'll pay that 100 years for you or that fine for you. And all you have to do is accept it. It's a, the Bible says it's a free gift. So you have to accept the gift. You can choose to reject a gift if you want. If you get something for Christmas, you can choose to reject it. But why would you? It's so easy. It's like if you're on an aeroplane. It's like if you're on an aeroplane that's going down into the ocean and Jesus is there with millions, unlimited life rafts in fact. And all you've got to do is accept that life raft in humbleness. But so many of us are prideful and think that we can do it on by ourselves. But Jesus said that you must be perfect to enter the kingdom of heaven. But he's the only one who was perfect. So that's why it's critical that we put our faith in him because i'm not perfect i fall short of the glory of god every day although i try i try my best to be a good person by society's standards i can't ever reach jesus standards and we know that jesus was a sinless person because even in front of his enemies he said which one of you can prove me guilty of sin but none of them were able to prove him guilty of sin because they knew he had no sin in him as it's written in the first book of john the first epistle of john so but there's no other prophet in history or no other religious figure in history or political figure in history who was a sinless person, but Jesus was. No one was able to convict him of any sin whatsoever. But even more than that, as he was being crucified on the cross and he was being martyred for what he claimed, which was to be God in human form, rather than cursing his enemies like I would have if I had nails rammed into my wrists and into my ankles, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So what amazing humility does that take a person to forgive the people who are literally torturing him and killing him in that moment, you know? That's the type of example that I would want to follow in my life. And I was an atheist for my whole life, so I was lacking direction. I was told that I could make whatever meaning out of life I wanted to, and I tried to in the things of the world, whether that was trying to make money, whether that was sex, or chasing lustful desires, or drugs, you know? But none of these things are going to fulfill you. Even chasing a career, you know, something that's not <laughs> related to anything illegal, that's not going to fulfill you either, because what if you lose your job? What if you put all your desire into finding a husband or wife, but then they divorce you? The divorce rates are like 50% now. So it's so easy Sorry? for us to lose these things that we put our happiness in. But So why not put your happiness and all of your trust in the one that's never going to leave you and never going to forsake you, which is Jesus? But even more than that, it's not just what you gain here on earth, it's about what you gain for eternity.